This is a Logic Pro X tutorial on using reverb as a send effect. I will also give you a power tip in the end of this video. Let's do this. There's basically three ways to add reverb on an instrument in your track. One, using a reverb that's built into the instrument itself. For example, here I have a synth called The Legend. And as you can hear, it's a very dry sound now. But this instrument has a built-in reverb in it, so you can use that to increase the wet value and the settings here. And now... We have reverb. Two, using reverb as an insert effect on the specific track. So I have turned down the reverb on the instrument, and then I go to the track inspector under the plugin itself, you have audio effects. This is where you add insert effects. So simply go to reverb or your third party plugins. But I will use the built in chroma verb in uh, Logic. Then you choose a room, let's say a concert hall. And now we have a reverb as an insert effect. And three using reverb as a send effect that you can apply to many tracks. So if I remove this insert effect and go here to send, and in fact, let's close this and go into the mixer so you can see what will happen. So I have the Moog synth still selected. And if I click here, send and use bus one, for example, you can choose whichever bus you want. Now look what happens in the mixer. Logic created an auxiliary channel here, which is the bus 1. So this little knob here, which you can also see in the track inspector, tells Logic how much of the signal from this track you want to send a duplicate of into this bus. So if we choose to call this, for example, room, and now uh, this is simply a duplicate of the signal. So if I play something on the Moog soon, and then if I increase this, you see it simply turns up the volume because this is no reverb yet. I just named it room. You have to actually add an insert effect on the, the uh, bus channel. So that's how send effects work. You have the uh, tracks you want to add reverb to and set up a send bus to a specific bus that you have created in your mixer. So now, we have routed that to bus one. I can increase it. Now we need to add an, a reverb here. So let's do the same kind of reverb here and go the, to the settings concert hall. And now if I increase this bus, as you can see, there's no volume yet until I send something to that bus. So basically you create a mix of the dry signal, which is on the track you send from, and the wet signal, which is where this send knob is uh, sent to. So you can dial in. The more you increase this knob, the more of the mix uh, will be the reverb or the wet signal, as it's called. Now, the great thing about using reverb as a send effect is that you can place many instruments in the same room and dial in how much of the wet signal you want from each. So, as you can see here, I have a short little track I wrote here with piano, synth and strings. And I have added a insert effect on each of these, but that's not very efficient either because that will take lots of CPU and it's basically like recording these individual sounds in three different orchestral holes and then mix them together. That makes no sense. You should probably record them all in the same room, right? At least if you want the same room sound. So instead of using insert effects, I use send effects. And I have already created this room here. So you simply choose to bus it to bus one room here on the piano, bus one room here, on the synth and bus one room here. And without anything, um, it will sound like this. So it's very dry now, as you can hear. But if I increase the volume, let's uh, check out the piano, for example. As you can hear can dial in 
how much reverb you want in the particular sound. And that's this room I created on this bus channel. So you can do this for the next one as well, which is the synth, without. Increase the reverb. And do it for the strings too. And now we basically use the same reverb effect on all these channels so they are in the same room and it also saves CPU power on your computer since you only have to use one plugin. So now it sounds like this. Alright, so what if you want to use more than one reverb in your music production? Well, you have created this on bus 1. You can go here and create auxiliary channel strips like this and then assign a bus number to that. Now that's bus 2 and use a reverb here. But the easiest way, if I delete that, is to simply go to any track, use an empty spot here in the sense and this one is used, so let's choose the next one. Logic created automatically in you here, so we simply can say room 2 on this one. Let's re rename that into room 1. Add a reverb again. Let's do, in fact, an entirely different reverb plugin. This one, let's use a gated drum preset. And now you can simply apply that one instead. Uh, by the way, you should reduce this one. It's uh, most common sense to only use one reverb or one room on one sound. So now we have bus 2 here on the Moog synth. Let's see if we can set that. Which sounds like this. So you can use that one now on any track you like. So let's say you want that on this synth instead of the original one. Simply select that in the uh, send bus and increase it. Let's see, we have to select it. So that's how you create another bus. And you can simply continue going like this. Add a new bus, bus 3, apply a different reverb uh, or room to this one. And uh, basically continue with as many reverbs as you wish. And now I have a special power tip for you, which is related to the names of these buses. Because this is simply the track name. The bus name here is simply right now bus 1, bus 2, bus 3. So let's say you want to add one of your different reverbs or sends to this uh, synth here. How can you remember which one was which? Well, that's when you go into here. Options, I.O. Labels. And if you check here, it simply says bus 1. Change that to user and then write the long name and short name. The short name is what will be here. So if you on room one on this bus chose a, a what was it, a concert hall? Well, then simply write hall here. And now you can see all the uh, channels you add the one, uh, the bus one to, it says hall here instead of bus one. So you know which one is which. And let's say this was a gated room. Let's simply use room and now instead of room, why doesn't it update? Oh, I had to put it on user here. You can also use like the long name concert hall and this was like a drum room. So this is a great way to basically have a more clear overview of the different send effects in your mixer. Subscribe now and watch a lot more videos on composing music, producing music, sound design, Logic Pro X and much more. I'll see you in the next video, my friends.